Lesson 9.4, Graphing Sine and Cosine Functions. Our essential question, how do you explore characteristics, stretch and shrink, translate, and reflect graphs of sine and cosine functions? Standard 9.4, number five, graphing a reflection. We are now reflecting our sine and cosine functions. The maximum that used to exist up here is now the minimum, and the minimum that used to exist here is now the maximum. You'll notice our points of intersection do not change. Our max and mins are just reversing. Same with the cosine. What used to be the max is now the min, and what used to be the min is now the max. Our intersections are not moving. We just flipped our cosine and sine functions. So let's go ahead and take a look at this graph. First thing we need to do is we need to identify A. My A is a negative 2. My B, which is a 2 thirds. The number you are subtracting is your H. So my H is pi halves. And there is no adding or subtracting of a value on the outside, which would have been my k. So my k is 0. To be able to graph this, the first thing we need to find is our amplitude. Your amplitude is the absolute value of a, which means I have the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. So that means that when I find my midline, my sine function is going to be too high and too low. But my y-axis does not have the scaling correct to be able to go 2 up and 2 down. So we're going to have to wait and rescale this. Let's go ahead and take a look at our period. Period is 2 pi all over the absolute value of b. So I have 2 pi all over the absolute value of the fraction 2 thirds. And that simplifies down to 3 pi. That means that every time I graph my sine, it's going to repeat every 3 pi. Let's go ahead and look at h and k and see what our transformations do. My h is a pi over 2 you know that h does your horizontal shift, so that meant I horizontally shifted to the right by pi halves. It means I'm no longer starting at the zero, I'm starting right here on pi halves. My k value, which is a zero, is a vertical shift, so I have no vertical shift because it was a zero. So I know that I'm moving over pi halves, and I need to be able to travel an entire three pi after that, which meant my y-axis also does not have the proper scale. So we need to rescale both our x and y axis. So scaling my y axes, I'm going to go ahead and count by pi's. So to figure out my y axis, let's go ahead and do our midline. We forgot to do our midline. Midline is y equals k, but my k is 0. My midline is still at the 0. I didn't move at all. So my midline is going to be right here. And I need to be able to travel two more up and two more down from this midline. So if we just go ahead and scale it like this, we'll be able to fit. So now I need to figure out what my five key points are. And since this is a line of reflection, we need to make sure that we're doing our key points using the positive value of this. So we're going to do it doing the absolute value of negative 2 sine of the 2 thirds x minus pi halves. This will allow us to find the sine, the proper sine function, and then we just need to make sure we reflect it when we're done. Sine always has three x-intercepts, and the x-intercept needs to take into account that we have an x and a y transformation. So here is my x and my y transformation. My h is a pi halves, my k was a zero. So this is pi halves zero. Even though we are reflected, that does not reflect the intercept. My intercept is still right here at pi halves zero. Let's look at intercept number two. Intercept number two still needs to take into account your h and k transformations. My b is a two thirds. My h is a pi halves. My k is zero. Solving this part of it first, I get three pi halves. I'm supposed to add another pi halves, so this ends up giving me 2 pi 0. This is my second intercept right here. Sine has three intercepts, and we'll have still three intercepts. My third intercept formula is this one right here, making sure our h and our k transformations are in it as well. My b is a 2 thirds, my h is a pi halves, and my k is a 0. So this simplifies to 3 pi, so 3 pi plus pi halves, which gives me 7 pi halves. My third point is at 7 pi halves, which is right here. 
So I have three intercepts, and these are the, still the same three intercepts. So let's go ahead and make sure that this is repeating the whole way through. So this was one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. So we have our repeated x-intercept values. Now I need to find my max and my min. So this is our max formula, taking into account the h and the k transformations. b is 2 thirds. My h is a pi halves. The absolute value of a was 2 and my k was 0. Solving this part of the fraction, I would have gotten the answer 3 fourths pi plus you have your one half pi still. Three fourths pi plus one half pi gives me five fourths two. Now this would have been my max if I were not reflected. That is at five fourths. Five fourths two would have been right here. It's two up, but I need to reflect it, which meant now it's going to be two down. So I needed to reflect it. It's no longer at the two up. I needed to move two down and it would have landed me at negative two. So my reflection is right here at this coordinate point. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our min. This is the min formula with the h and the k transformations. My b is 2 thirds. My h is pi halves. Negative of my absolute values a and my k. This part of the fraction simplifies to 9 pi fourths. You still have to add the pi halves, and this would have been a negative 2. 9 fourths pi plus pi halves gives me 11 pi fourths, 2, negative 2, 11 pi fourths, negative 2, and this would have been my min, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It should have been down here at negative 2, which is 2 away, but I have to reflect it. So if it's not 2 down anymore, it's actually 2 up, and it is right here. So that is at the coordinate point 11 pi fourths positive 2. This is our, so we needed to reflect our max and our min points. If the max was at 2, you needed to give that positive 2 to the min. If your min was at negative 2, you needed to give that to the max, so my max was then at negative 2. You're switching the y values, so your max is now a min and your min is now a max. So this is my one period length of this function, but we need to continue all the way through. So I see that one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six segments between my intercepts, and on the third one I had my min or I had my max. So one, two, three, here would have been my next, and then there you have it, your x-intercept. So one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We have it all broken up. So one, two, three, I needed my max. There's my intercept. One, two, three, I needed a min. One, two, three, there was already an intercept there. One, two, three, I need my max. One, two, three, there's already an intercept there. So here is my sine function. Okay, so what did we do? You need to reflect the y values of the max and the min. That is how you reflect the entire function. You need to make sure that you reflect the y values of your max and your min. Let's go ahead and take a look at our cosine function. First, we need to identify a. a is a negative 1. My b is a 1. My h is what I was supposed to be subtracting, so that was a negative pi halves, and I don't see an added or subtracted on the outside, so I have no k. Let's find all of our information first, and then try and graph it. So first thing you need to do is we need to find our amplitude. That is the absolute value of a, which is the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1. Then you need to find your period. Your period is 2 pi all over the absolute value of b, so this is 2 pi all over the absolute value of 1, which simplifies down to 2 pi. Then you need to find your midline. Your midline is the y equals k formula. Since k is 0, my midline is at y equals 0, which meant it didn't move at all. 
My H, which is a negative pi halves, tells us our horizontal shift. And since it's negative, we know we are going to shift to the left, and we're shifting to the left by halves. My K is always my vertical shift, and since K is zero, I have no vertical shift. So now let's go ahead and find our five key points. Remembering sine and cosine have very different functions, so you have to be careful. Cosine has two x-intercepts, so let's go ahead and find our two x-intercepts. This is the first x-intercept. Take into account your h and your k movements. B is 1, h is a negative pi halves, and k is 0. Solving this multiplied portion of the fraction first, I get pi halves. I am then supposed to be subtracting a pi halves. Pi halves minus pi halves gives me 0. So my first x-intercept is going to be at the coordinate point 0, 0. What about my second x-intercept? The equation taking into account your h and k movements. My b is 1, my h is a negative pi halves, and k is 0. This multiplied fraction is 3 pi halves. We're supposed to subtract this pi half. So I end up having pi 0 as my second x-intercept. Now we need to find our max and mins. And remember, the max and mins are actually going to end up getting reflected. So let's go ahead and look for my first max. This is the equation of the first max. And we're using a as a value of 1, because don't forget, you're supposed to be solving all of this, thinking that we have the absolute value of negative 1, this function. So my a is a 1. My k is 0. So I have the coordinate point negative pi halves 1. This is my non-reflected max. Let's go ahead and find our, our fourth point, which is the second max. My h and k are taken into account. My b is a 1. My h is a negative pi halves. I'm using the absolute value of a, which is 1. So this max ends up giving me 3 pi halves positive 1. These are the non-reflected. We'll reflect them in a minute. Our fifth and final point is my minimum, taking h and k into account. My b is 1. My h is a negative pi halves. I'm doing the negative of my a, which is a 1, and I'm adding the k of 0. This part of the fraction would have given me pi. I am then subtracting a pi halves. So I end up getting pi halves negative 1. Your y values on your max need to change and switch with the y value on the min. So that means this is actually a negative pi halves. It's stealing the negative 1. This is the reflected max that I will need to be graphing. This is then the 3 pi halves, and I'm stealing the min's negative 1. So this right here then is my reflected max. So I have my two reflected maxes. But their y value needs to be given to the min. So this is actually pi halves positive 1. This is my reflected min. So now let's go ahead and graph all of these points. So my midline is 0. So that means that this right here is still my midline. Everybody will cross there. My intercept is at 0, 0 and at pi 0. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. I have my repeated intercepts. My max is now at negative pi halves, negative 1. My other max is now at 3 pi halves, negative 1. Because remember, the maxes turn into mins. These are now my mins because they were reflected. What was a max is now a min. What was a min is now a max and it is at pi halves 1. So this is my cosine. I need to make sure that every, I moved over 1, had a max, moved over 1, intercept, moved over 1, min. Move over 1, intercept, move over 1, I now need a max, so here's my max. Intercept, max, intercept. So here is my cosine function. Let's go ahead and do this problem. Before we graph anything, let's find all of our information first. So first, I know that a is a negative 3. I see that b is a 1 half, 
there is no parenthesis with an H, and I see that K is a 2. So finding all my information first, my amplitude is the absolute value of A, which is the absolute value of negative 3, which is a 3. My period. My period is the equation 2 pi all over the absolute value of B, which meant I have the absolute value of 1 half which meant it simplifies down to 4 pi. So my period is 4 pi. My midline. My midline is the y equals k formula. My k is 2. So that meant my midline now is at y equals 2. The h, which is 0, always does our horizontal shift because it's 0, and that meant I have no horizontal shift. The k, which is a 2, tells me my vertical shift. So I do have a vertical shift. I have a vertical shift up 2. So let's go ahead and get our x and y axis scaled appropriately. I need to shift my line up 2, which meant my y needs to be able to count to at least 2. But once I'm up there at 2, I need to be able to count up 3 more, which would have been 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can now count up to 5. I am not shifting left or right anywhere. I start right here at 0 but I need to be able to count a period of a complete 4 pi, which I cannot. So that means I need to rescale my x-axis as well. And if I count these by pi's, I will be able to count a full 4 pi period before repeating. Now let's go ahead and look at our five key points, and we're not going to graph them until we found them all first. Sine has three intercepts. And all of them are going to intersect right here on this y equals we found. So our first intercept, taking into account the h and k movements, my first intercept is at the coordinate point 0, 2. I need to take it into account my h and k movements. My b is a 1 half. My H is a 0, and my K is a 2. So this simplifies to 2 pi 2. My third intercept, the formula taking into account my H and my K. My B is a 1 half, my H is a 0, and my K is a 2. This simplifies to 4 pi 2. All three of my intercepts are going to intersect on our midline. So coloring all of those, we have 0, 2, 2 pi, 2, and 4 pi, 2. They all intersect on the midline, which is where they're supposed to. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. There's all my repeats. Now I need to find my 1 max and my 1 min. So my max, if I was doing it on the non-negative sine function, my max would have been the equation taking into account a, h, and k. My b is a 1 half. My h is a 0. a is a negative 3, and k is a 2. So this simplifies to pi 5. And my min equation Take it into account the H and K movements. B is a 1 half. My H is a 0. Negative. My A is supposed to be a 3. And my K is a 2. So this simplifies to 3 pi negative 1. Now what was a max is now going to be a min because he's switching Y values with this guy. So he is actually going to be at pi negative 1. This is my min. And what was a min is now my max because it switched because it's stealing his y value and turning it into a 5. Now why did these switch? It's because we are a reflection. When you are reflecting, your max and min are switching locations across the midline, which means what was my y now comes over here. And what was my y now comes over here. They switch their y values. So your max and min switch your y values. So I have a pi negative 1. And I have a 3 pi 1, 3, 4, 5. 3 pi 5. And double check. Are they 3 apart from each other? So if I'm on the midline, I went down 1, 2, 3. I found my min. 
I'm on the midline. One, two, three, I found my max. They are three apart from one another. So this is my sign, and now we just need to make sure that it gets repeated. So every whole value of pi has a new point. So whole value of pi, I have a max. Another whole value of pi, I now have my min. Whole value of pi, I now have my min. So here is my sine function. There are two problems left on the page for you to do for independent practice. Please do these on your own.